Hello, it's Philip Taylor speaking from Richmond Green Chambers in London. This morning I'm looking at a book which has come to us from Edward Elgar Publishing Limited. This book is called The Law and Economics of Federalism and it's been edited by Jonathan Click. Uh, so it's a collection of contributions by various people. It's available, of course, online and as a book. And it's the Elgar online site that you can uh, see to get your actual uh, information. Now, the title Elizabeth and I have given this uh, book review, and we discussed this book in some detail because it's, it's slightly different from the normal ones. We gave it new discussions on federalism and its economic linkages. And that's really what it is. It's fig topical, as I say, for the 21st century. Let's have a look at the book first, anyway. There's the front cover, a nice red cover. Then there's the spine. And then after that, you've got the, the back. And you can see that uh, Jonathan Click is at the University of Pennsylvania Law School in the United States of America. Now, the book itself runs... It's a hardback, and it runs to... 260 odd pages. There's the hardback. The um, <clears throat> pages are it's page numbering for the index of the back, so you can s find things pretty quickly. Um, there's a lot of referencing. There is a little note about the index, which is always worth reading in the Elgar publishing um, texts. Can I just say that the referencing is at the back of each of the chapters, which is normal. Uh, for this structure, the house style. The house style also extends to a conclusion normally for each of the chapter headings. And at the front of the book, we've got the actual front page there. <clears throat> then we go into, uh, that's the detail and the blurb about the online side. And you can see the structure. There are eight chapters in total. You see the names of the people who have written the information. Those are the contributors. I'll, I'll read their names out. Terry L. Anderson, Marianne P. Bittler, John A. Dove, Michael Four, Robert K. Fleck, Brian Gall, Jonah B. Gelbach, F. Andrew Hansen, Jonathan Click, Russell S. Sobel, Dominic E. P. Parker, uh, Joshua D. Wright and Madeline Zavod... Uh, Zavodnoy. I hope I was pronounced correctly, Madeline. I'm sorry about the last one. This is the um, book itself anyway. There's the front with an introduction from Jonathan. There is a little bit of footnoting, of course, at the bottom there. Then you've got, again, a bit more footnoting, and then you've got some references. So everything is very well laid out. And we'll start off with Brian Gall, or Galley, with his first... Um, statement there and there again it's it follows through as you can see as a fan standard structure and there's body text throughout <clears throat> so what do we say of this book it's a new book from edward elgar uh, which is an examination of federalism by a legal scholar aimed for the most part at other legal scholars primarily those based in the united states of america which as we all know has a federal system of government as does neighboring canada and a number of other developed nation for that, uh, nations and uh, countries for that matter. And yes, of course, Europe, but uh, more about the European Union later, as we Brits are shortly, uh, shortly about to say goodbye to the EU because we're doing our own thing. Uh, but that's for another book and another day, I think. Meanwhile, let's look at the book. Consider the complexities of the often uneasy relationship between the powers of the US federal government and those of the individual states. It's an interesting um, position to be in. Making a stalwart contribution to the richer and fuller understanding of the economic links to the law of federalism is editor is what, in fact, the editor Jonathan Click is doing. He comes from the University of Pennsylvania and he heads a coast-to-coast -coast team of top US academics from a variety of universities, from the University of California at Davis to the Georgetown University Law Center. So there's a, a nice little sort of mix of, of different people that he's selected to be contributors. The result then is a collection of specially commissioned articles on what turns out to be somewhat abstruse subject matter with, with respect to uh, Jonathan. Now, of course, it would be of abiding interest to, and well, certainly academics, academic lawyers, and of course, economists, especially those seeking further or more original insights into hitherto unexplored or underexplored aspects of federalism and its symbiotic links with economic issues. 
because it is all sort of linked together, as I'm sure you know, within the great political, legal, economic mesh, if I can put it that way. For example, in uh, Click's examination relating to the taxation powers of states, he expresses his interest in how Congress changed what the states can do across a range of circumstances, stating that the direction of the change offers better evidence about how Congress behaves. It sounds a trifle opaque, perhaps, on this side of the Atlantic. The Brits in particular might be interested in the chapter on harmonisation of private law in Europe. Europe, says his writer, still lacks, even after the Treaty of Lisbon, a completely integrated federal system, whereas in the United States, uh, domains belonging to private law, such as contract, tort and property issues, traditionally would belong to state law and only under particular strict conditions would then move to federal law. Not surprisingly, the increasing Europeanization of private law, which is the allegation certainly of the Eurosceptics and why probably people voted against staying into the EU, because of this Europeanization of private law, it's therefore been the subject of a lot of criticism from law and economic scholarship. And you can understand exactly why we've got into that position. Let me conclude in this short review by saying it's difficult to disagree with this and indeed with the vast bulk of the discussions contained in this book, all of which are erudite, cop um, copiously researched, uh, quite often technical and therefore worthy of serious study and analysis as collectively the springboard for further research, deliberation and comment. And the book publish, uh, publishing date is 2017. Can I just say, it's, it is actually quite readable when you go through it. There is, there is quite a lot. There's always a, a danger. I've got for a table there. For There's always a danger when the word economics turns up that you're going to get a very boring book. Um, it's always the case with law that a lot of people think we're very pedantic and boring. But um, I think it's actually eminently readable. Let's take just in the middle, page 91. Do profits promote pollution? The myth of the environmental race to the bottom. You see, there's a, a very interesting article there. And there's a quote from Karl Popper. The ability to vote a bad government out of office is enough. Well, uh, that's an interesting point. I don't know whether that possibly is as correct as it might be, but that is what Professor Popper said at that particular time in 2012. So you see the book anyway. What I did like, as I say, I think the meticulous referencing is a great attribute. This is another book from the high style of Elgar, and I must thank Elgar very much indeed for producing this work, because they give us a great deal of very, very good um, detailed academic titles, uh, certainly in law, which is my particular field. And we really do find it a lot easier to produce some of the interesting points that we argue upon uh, by having this sort of material available. So thank you very much to Elgar for continuing the tradition of producing these excellent books. And I'd like to thank, of course, uh, Jonathan Glick and his team for producing this particular one. Thank you. Bye-bye.